Now I've got, I brought down a couple that'll give a little better. Um, all of these show that, but not quite as valuable as this. So I've got some photographs. You can see how I've slowed down considerably. You can see it would jump up and down. Uh, the one I want here. Talk about being ready. Being ready. Okay. Well, uh, you, actually, you have to be ready on every photograph. Uh, every time you want. Sure. You can't be in the next block. Here's one, for example, that represents. What I mean about being around. Now, this happened, this happened one summer after I was walking around the way campus. And I saw these, this girl and her friend sitting on a bench uh, off to the right here. And uh, these two, three guys were teasing the two girls. And the girls were getting upset for a couple of days. They were starting to scream a little bit at the guys. And all of a sudden, while well, I'm sitting there, camera in hand, they walked over, picked her up, walked her over to the reflecting pool, and I didn't know either of them were in it, but it's easy. They just threw her into the pond. And well, I got it, just right there. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. So being there is essential. Now also, this also means, deals with being lucky. If they hadn't stood exactly where they were, they would have obstructed the girl flying through the air. And they, they just had, nobody would do what was going on photographically. Uh, but I just waited for the right minute and I just got it just at that moment. And otherwise, if they had been moved one way or another, I was lucky and I got all of the girl in the photograph. And so you, there's no question as to what's being, what's being done here. They're playing around with this. So, now the, the other thing that I was talking about is being ready. The first one is obvious, those camera adjustments and all that. You learn that in the, in the first years of uh, school if you go to school. You don't need to go to school to learn that anyway. You, you learn that on your own, you can. The other thing is being ready is having this huge background. I think you have to recognize what is significant and what isn't significant. And this, this takes, you know, if I were going to set up a, a, a new school tomorrow, you know, I've set up a school, I would have a four-year program. One year would be for learning how to use all the new equipment and the old if possible. Uh, film, primarily digital, computers, the whole shot. It would take one year to do all that. The next three years would be spent in reading everything you can get your hand on. I have a special program built up. You'd read significant works, history, art, science. The more you know, the more likely you're going to see something that is significant to you. But if you don't ever think about it, you know, like the, 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 the woman at the sewing the uh, uh, discus, the, the sit prisoner, or the, uh, the four guys in their automobile. Uh, you have to have some background someplace along the line uh, to, to take the most significant photographs that you, that you can uh, find. And uh, so that would be the, the, the uh, 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 what am I trying to say? The, the, the being, being ready. Being ready means mentally as well as uh, being there at the point. And also at one point, um, um, statement that uh, Brisson made that and you can see how important Brisson was was to my growth as a photographer. Um, um, 
Oh, I've forgotten what I was going to say. This is this is what kind of bugged me a little bit, but let me go on. Uh, uh, the, the last third law is uh, being lucky, and this one is illustrates that being lucky. Just have to be. Things have to happen. Somebody can you have the greatest shot in the world, but if they move away or look at you, whatever, which happens sometimes, or uh, move away, uh, walk away. So you have to be lucky like that one shows. And uh, if someone did see me before I had a chance to trip the shutter, I would just go up to them and ask them if I could take their photograph. And in, in all those 70 years, I don't know how many times I did that, not too often, but I only had two people who didn't want the photographs made. They would ask me, they were curious. They'd say, well, why do you want my photograph? So I, my, my standard statement was, well, I'm doing a study of people in Detroit, and I'd like to just add to that photographs of, of the people like you who are walking the streets of Detroit. And uh, they would say, yeah, okay. I never posed them. They, I said, just stand over there, and uh, just stand still until I backed off. And uh, they always posed themselves like this, the photographs of the uh, six kids in the back. Uh, they were just playing running around the, the street. To just, uh, I just walked by them and I said, hey kids, how about a photograph? So they all glommed together in a, in a way that I could never oppose them in that sense. They, they just got together and they made such a powerful statement of, of what, they're, what it's about. And, uh, so uh, you just sort of have to be ready to, to attack the problem in every way you can. And uh, now another thing that I'd like to cover uh, is um, um, one of Rousseau's statements. Uh, he, he talks about the uh, decisive moment. For each photograph, there's a decisive moment. Now everybody thought, including myself, that what he was referring to was the, uh, the the intensity of the situation, the accident that he's photographing, or something significant in that sense. And what he's really talking about is the relationship between the subject that you're photographing, the, which is always a person, uh, street photography. Well, I know there are, there are times that you, you can find something in the street, but. Uh, the uh, interesting thing was that it's not about uh, uh, simply photographing a, uh, an accident or somebody getting shot or something like that, which people believe for many years. It's about the relationship between the subject and the background that makes sense. Now I'll show you a couple of shots here. Uh, this one. This is not in the show either. And this, this, this man standing there, which I assume is his left hand, is a gin and tonic. <laughs> There's no other, at that time of day, in that situation, the gin and tonic is the only one that would really function properly. The other hand <laughs> is lovingly placed on the, on the yacht that he owns. Now that says a lot about this guy. You know, it, it says he, he's a proud, wealthy individual, he would never be able to go through no more, no more than the, the camel going through the eye of a needle. Remember that? Some of you people remember your catechism? Uh, I don't know why I remember that. But anyway, uh, it, and this now, the background naturally has more contemporary compositional type. The lines lead right to him. He's in a perfect spot. And he didn't see any photograph. You know, I just walked up there and I looked at the other boat for a while. And I saw him, but then he looked away and I took the shot. And I got him. And he's standing there, the, the epitome of the confident, wealthy individual who is proud of his he oozes pride. <laughs> <laughs> he oozes pride. Now, the other one, 
that, that's one style. That, that's one. But you see, that, that, that Matt that meets Bresson's dictum that, that the background and the foreground have to fit together. That's what makes that decisive moment. If, the, if he'd been somewhere else, it wouldn't have cut it. No, that's the other one. This is one. Out as you were in the shell, but uh, tell the story. Now here's another one. Just the opposite of that one. Here's this elderly woman, white cane, walking on in a rain day uh, on Casper, and the background says that. You know, the background fits in exactly with what you expect. explains To me, it's very simple, but it's hard to explain sometimes as to, to why I prefer black and white. And uh, 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 this is one photograph that sort of explains why I do that, why I use black and white. This is a photograph that I find very interesting. Of course, I find them all very interesting. I suppose they're prejudiced, but but uh, okay. The, now this this has it covers all of the uh, uh, three iron laws of uh, street photography. But the one I'm interested here is, is why do I use black and white? Well, I use black and white. First of all, let me explain. These people rushing back and forth, moving, doing something, shopping, probably because. Just by accident, being there, the sign is J.L. Hudson's, where right away everybody thinks of, okay, J.L. Hudson's great department store, it's great shop. So it works fine, it just happened again. Because I was just looking at the people walking across the street. I had no idea that the sign was in there at the time. It's such a small little piece on it, so I didn't see it until it was done. But now there you can see all these people rushing from Hudson's after having bought something, maybe going to Hudson's to buy something. And why are they doing this? And this is very important to me as to why I use black and white. Because I think what they're doing, like all of us do at one time or another, we have a limited lifespan. And that end of life concept is with us psychologically or real. Not too many people uh, to go around concerned about it all the time, but it's there. And I think that I use black and white because I think color would destroy that very strong feeling about what life is all about. And I think that also, maybe in just in my term, but it also adds a significance to the to the work that I use, the, the street photography. Because it does catch people 
doing something to forget what <coughs> why they're waiting for the bill. <laughs> why are they doing that? Well, they're doing it to forget. Most people forget by becoming members of the church. But then they've got a problem. Because now they've got to really be good or they go to hell and they, and they miss the, the, the event or to heaven. <laughs> These people are, are, are probably both of that, but uh, it, it, it illustrates that point about the, uh, uh, what I should plot and what I should.